comfy new digs in the top secret podcast layer. I am your host, Kavon Bordelon. And yes, we are going to be, all right, to be fair, we're going to try to be a little more calm on this week's episode of Implicit Bias. We are diving into our weekly whiskey segment, which means that we've got the crew here in the top secret podcast layer where yes, yes, we have. We have figured out a way to turn sitting at a bar into a podcast, which is exactly what we have now, as well as a radio show for our listeners in New Orleans, in Vidalia, in Natchitoches, in Monroe. We now officially will be moving to video, which means if you want to see us, you can go to X, you can go to Facebook, you can go to YouTube. We're going to be in all those places, which also means you get to not just be verbally introduced to the crew, you get to be visually introduced to the crew if you can find it. Let's start with the person in the chair to my right. Grant, you uh, you feeling bougie over there? I like this. It's almost got that uh, Mr. Lester's 2.0 feel. I mean, we're getting we're getting a little leathered out here. You know? Well, got this the, got the nice. This is going to end up being the Mr. Lester's top secret podcast layer when this is all done. Because yeah, that that's a special deal, special partnership. We're going to be down there at times doing video, but we can't always be down there because it is a special place. So we wanted to try and be special all the time, so we built this here. Well, it's it's a really nice step. I like this. It's like uh, Little Lester's West. The, no, Little Lester's North. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're North. We're North. We're, we're North. We're west of yeah, no, we're, we're We're North. Uh, well, we're North. Okay, right, we're right, North, look, Northwest. Give me, give me northwest. Okay, we're North, Northwest. I mean, if you're going to be really technical like about it, which, shocker, somebody on the show is going to be difficult. <laughs> okay, that is Grant Galatis of William S. Nacal Jewelers, K&B. From Kenna, bruh. All right. To the bar, which is an inaugural thing, right? To the bar, we have two guests of the show who've been here with us a few times. We're going to start with Chris Castro, another former New Orleanian here on the show, the resident attorney. So, Mr. Castro, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here, Kavana. I like being in the, the new digs. Yeah, the, nice. the, the digs for you. This was a real surprise for you. You had seen none of this. Well, I'd stop by the uh, top secret podcast layer. But before all of this, yeah. this is quite an improvement. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that it is. And then, of course, of Industrial Fabrication Services, Mr. Jonathan Broussard is sitting to your left. Mr. Jonathan, uh, this was uh, somewhat of a surprise for you because my understanding is you're also working on surprises here on Implicit Bias. That's right. Coming soon. Yeah, Coming you, soon. You, you can do lots of really fancy stuff and designs with metal, right? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. For, well, for special clients. You've, you've done things just, I mean, you've done everything from like railing to industrial mechanics, correct? Absolutely. We, we, we are metal fusion specialists. We do whatever it takes and whatever we can. That is uh, an outstanding thing as we, as I said, uh, go head first into our weekly whiskey. Oh, I need to introduce the person sitting in the corner. The new dig sometimes I forget. Actually, sometimes I just rather forget. Walker Griffon, better off dead, the implicit bias pledge. Walker, I know you don't have a camera. I apologize, but it was by design. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the new digs? I, I know it. this is a new dynamic for you with regards to switching mics and making sure things are yeah, on. Yeah, but it all worked out. Not everybody's just at a table where it's easier, correct? Eh, I mean, yeah, but it's not that big of a difference, honestly. Good. Like setting up wise. Good. I'm, I'm glad... I'm actually thinking during the show, making sure mics are working and all that good stuff and everybody's mic is potted up and all that is, is a little different, correct? Yeah, a little bit, but we're all good. Very, uh, we'll figure it out as we go. I love the way we'll that he good. just rolls with the punches. I mean, when you are nine and a half years old and you can figure <laughs> things out like this, it's impressive. So let's talk about our weekly whiskey from our weekly whiskey partners at New News Markets. This one comes from Youngsville, Louisiana, just south of the... Mr. Lester's Top Secret Podcast Lair, which is located somewhere in downtown Lafayette. Oh, Mr. Castro is going to hand me the bottle. It is Toasted Barrel Month. This is a Char 5 Penelope Toasted Barrel. And Penelope, so I'm going to give you a little background on this one because Penelope has been one that I have always really, really enjoyed. The things that Penelope has started to do with whiskey, especially right out of the gate, when they did the Valencia Barrel, um, it just did really unique things that put great flavors into bourbon and whiskey. But the one that really got me started with Penelope and really just kind of lit me on fire for Penelope is this. When they did their toasted barrel rye, it was an 
absolute stunner. So I really can't wait to taste this one. Some of the guys here in the Top Secret Podcast layer have already had some tastes. Grant, let's start with you. What do you think of this Penelope Toasted Barrel? Now, this is a bourbon. It is a char five, heavy char, at 100 proof. Uh, the one we had last week uh, had similar notes. It was it was very sweet initially, very sweet on the palate. Uh, the 100 proof, um, I'm sorry, but y'all have graduated me to, to a little bit heavier proofs. I like the the 110 in that range now. It, it, it just, it, it it wakes you up and, and, and hits you a little bit harder than this. This it, it doesn't have as much legs as last week. Last week it was viscous, it was that rye, and it just really sat in your throat and just kind of coated your throat with the flavors. So this one seems a little bit lighter. I don't know if it's just the proof or, or the overall spice. I think you overate before you came to this week's episode of Implicit Bias. That's what I think. <laughs> How so? What happened? Oh, no, I think that, that 100 proof, it, could it be a little more aggressive? I agree, it probably could be a little more aggressive. Right. On the same hand, oh, the flavors on this one. And Sweet. I can't wait to see how this opens up. I can't wait to see what this is like once we get some water and whiskey in it. We get it to open up just a bit with a couple drops of that, and we go down that road. But, Let's, but look, but overwhelming sweet, correct? Please. I don't get overwhelming First. sweet. I get, and I'm, I, I can't go there yet. I'm kind of holding on to this one just gotcha. a bit. Savoring. I'm holding on. I'm savoring this one. <laughs> I want it to hit the palate a little bit longer. I want a few more glasses or sips, whichever I can get to first, right, before I really gotcha. call this one. And I also want to see what some other people in here think before I poison the well. So <laughs> let's go to the bar. Uh, Jonathan, let's start with you. What do you think of this Penelope Toasted Barrel Bourbon? I do get the sweet. Uh, uh, it's not overwhelming, but it's it's got a lot of sweet to it. Um, the char, it says a heavy char, you said? Yep. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not finding the heavy char. I do have the char flavor in it. Um, it's got a light scent to me, uh, and it, it drinks to me more than 100 proof. I, I, I'm feeling a little more, but uh, it's a great drink. I absolutely agree that I think this drink's a little more aggressive than 100 on the proof, and I like that. I really like that it's got that little bit more bite to it. Now, it's on the front solely. It doesn't linger at all. Once it hits the back of the palate, to me, it goes away. It's really nice and becomes soft and sweet. And, oh, here's my word, my word of the week with this. It's supple. It is supple. Yeah, Grant with the bell. All right, let's hear from Walker, then we'll go to Chris. Walker, who is really the, the bourbon newbie here in the Top Secret Podcast layer. I'm curious, Walker, as to what you think of this. I like it a lot. Uh, like smoky, I get a little bit. Like kind of like a charcoal. Yeah. Or something well, like there, that. there's there's your there's your toasted barrel, your char. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. I can't really pull anything. Maybe nope. a little caramel. Uh, I I get a lot of caramel. Yeah, on this. I, I do get that. I get a lot of caramel on this. You get vanilla. Of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I get all the classic flavors mm -hmm. that you expect when it comes to bourbon. I get that on this particular pour, yeah. and it is absolutely outrageous. Yeah, that's what I would get on it, but I enjoy this a lot. Outstanding. I, I like hearing that. I don't enjoy it too much because we got the rest of the show to do, okay? <laughs> we, we know how you are, you and your pledge pin over there. Hell Week's <laughs> coming. I'm telling you, Hell Week is coming. Yeah, I know. You're not happy about that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it, I don't care. All right, let's talk to Chris Castro. So, Chris, I'm curious as to your thoughts on this. You are relatively new to the bourbon game, right? I am new to the bourbon game. So what do you think of this one? I have to tell you that uh, being new to it, I have started to explore bourbons uh, a bit more since being on the show last. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure your wife is thrilled about that. <laughs> well, I, I take it in, in, in small bits uh, because I, I think that you have to enjoy the taste and, and uh, let it kind of linger and enjoy. And and I really like this. I have to tell you, this is my first taste of it was quite smooth. Uh, I didn't find any real, you know, bite to it necessarily. It went down just, just quite like candy. Um, a little, a little extra kick towards the end there, but just, just very enjoyable. And uh, for what it is, it's for a hundred proof. I would never think that. And uh, I just really like it a lot. I have to say. I, I am absolutely with you. So I was holding on to this comment because. It's the only thing that's in my brain for those that have listened to the show before that are regulars of the show. You, you know the saying, this is bourbon, bourbony McBourbon. Okay. 
when you think of bourbon, this is exactly what you expect. It gives you all of that char. It gives you almost that toasted marshmallow flavor that you expect with a toasted barrel. But at the end, you get that massive caramel bomb on this. And what I really like about this, so first of all, it is obtainium. You can find it. You don't have to go and try and seek this out, hunt this down, and ask the local liquor monger, hey, do you guys by chance have any of that Penelope toasted barrel? You're not on the street corner doing bourbon deals with some guy that wants to charge you four figures to get the flavors that are involved in this. And what I am going to say is you absolutely get those flavors in this bottle. So to me, this is one of those where people are going to spend a lot of money for a name. It's not going to have the name that a lot of people would like to think is higher end bourbon. The liquor, the liquor that's in this bottle is in a lot of ways so much better than what people are paying a lot of money for. I mean, a lot of money, like sickening money. So... Yes, I get on the nose, I get that, that sweet, I get that corn. This is probably a very high corn mash bill. I really expect this to be something that has probably 60 to 70% corn. There's at the proof at 100, I love it. I would love, I would love to try this at 110. I would love to try this at 115 as Chris grabs the bottle and is trying to pour himself another three or four glasses, which is okay here in the Top Secret Podcast Lair. I would love to try this at 115, 120, 110, but at 100, the drinkability rating on this to me is just off the charts because what you have is you have now Grant, who is becoming somewhat of a bourbon snob. You're almost taking Sam, rest in peace, his place. By the way, for those who don't know the joke, Sam actually isn't dead. Sam was the the first producer of the show. He's just dead to us because he just left and he left before we did all this which is why we upgraded to Walker. We love you, Sam. Rest in peace. Anyway, this particular bottle can appease those bourbon snobs. I mean, Grant, I I think you like this, correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, What I wanted to tell Chris, though, is uh, four years ago when I was just stopped, I wasn't big (laughs) into this either. Uh, Just be careful. You know, we were like three months in, and I'm on the street trying to score bottles of Habiki. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, it does kind of grab me. When we first started off, the the habiki was was something that I really enjoyed because it was light and but it was still sweet and it was easy. But now we're sitting here and you called this bourbony bourbon bourbony McBourbon bourbon. I don't I don't know if I've ever known you to associate that with that heavily sweet like that though. I, I know the taste you usually associate it with, but I didn't think it was really one that was really this kind of sweet oriented. Oh yeah, it, yeah. it's well, it's that heavy caramel. Right. It's that really heavy caramel that you get that just coats the back of the tongue, that sits, it's warm, it warms the chest, it doesn't tear up the throat, and it is just so enjoyable to sip that this could be a problem. But And my point being, you as a bourbon snob now, you like this. Absolutely. Chris is somebody who's relatively new, says, I really like this as well. That, to me, is one of the monikers of something that is just done almost perfectly it is done so well that if you're new to bourbon go buy this i would agree if you love bourbon and you've been around it for a while and you're like man i've been drinking kind of all the same stuff i don't know what to go try that's new that i'm not going to be disappointed buying the bottle go buy this because you will not be disappointed whatsoever agreed all right So it is time that we play What Would You Pay for the What Would You Pay Championship Belt Chain, and we're going to rate this on the Morse Whiskey Rating Code. So here's how the Morse Whiskey Rating Code works. If we rated a red, it means we wouldn't drink it, even if it was free. If we rated a yellow, it means we would only drink it if it was free. If we rated a green... It means that we would buy it. But a blue, a blue means that I am going to seek this out. This has to be on my bar. And maybe, maybe this release is collectible. So, Walker, let's start with you. Where do you rate this on the Morse Whiskey Rating Code? And where do you put this in the What Would You Pay Championship Belt Chain Pricing Game? I'm going to give it a blue. 70... 
$73. All right, Grant. Last week, you're supposed to go $10, $10 a year in the barrel, and it was a seven-year barrel, and the, and the bottle was $59. So, my, you know, I'm not that good in math, but the, <laughs> that, that really doesn't add up. That is the general rule. Uh, that particular right. bottle was on the, the downside of that, which is always a positive. Right. Uh, but I, I, I swear, this, this bottle is, is just a flip-flop. I gave last week a blue. This one I'm going to give a green. Okay. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's, it's absolutely delicious, and it's a very light, very easy drinker. Uh, but I just wouldn't give it that wow factor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go lower this week. I'm going to go 58. 58. So, Walker, you went 70, 73. 73. 73. 58 from Grant. Let's go to the bar. Let's start with Jonathan. Jonathan, where do you rate this on the Morse Whiskey rating code, and what would you pay? Uh, I'm going to go green just because now you said it's out there. Uh, I don't have to do a vicious hunt to find it. Well, uh, okay, but, but that shouldn't play a factor. Is, that should not play a factor whether you can find it or not, whether it's a blue. It, it, it's something I think um, as a first-time Penelope drinker of any sort, uh, it's got me intrigued for the other bottles, the other types they make. So uh, are you now going to go find a bottle of this and buy it? Because you uh, yeah. then congratulations, Probably. it's a blue. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this is a it's a great everyday drink. Uh, I, I I was looking at the uh, the bottle of water and I'm I'm kind of nervous to put it in because it tastes so great without it. So. Uh, I don't know if I want to mess it up. Well, you only need a couple of drops of the water and whiskey, which we're going to do here as the show progresses. But I would give it, I would go $69. $69. So we have a $73, a $69, and a $58. All right, Mr. Castro, I'm curious as to where you rate this and what would you pay? I would uh, rate it at a green. Uh, I really like it. I got to tell you, it's uh, nice and light and for a, a, a rookie uh, bourbon drinker, it's something that if I saw, I'd pick it up. Absolutely. And um, I think that's going to run about uh, $65 a bottle. 65 a bottle. So we have 73 we have 58 we have 68 and 65 correct? 69. 69, 69 correct. Okay. So my rating, I, I'm going to put this... This, to me, is a blue. It, it's it's going to be a 3-2 green to blue here in the Top Secret Podcast layer. So, officially, it's a green. But I would give this a blue. I want this. I want this on my bar. I want to drink this every day. I want to make cocktails with this because, oh, my goodness, an old-fashioned made with this. Off the charts. And at $60.89 for the bottle, congratulations to Grant Galatis, who wins the What Would You Pay championship belt chain, which we will take off the bar and put on him for the next segment. Yeah, you cannot beat this at that price point for that liquid in that bottle. Man, all day, every day, and we know how this works. For those in the Lafayette area, you know that this is available at New News. You know you got to go and get it before they run out because they absolutely will, which we also just apparently ran out of time. Walker's given me the finger from the corner, and that's the one-minute finger, not that finger. We'll be right back. More Implicit Bias. <laughs> 